Greetings everyone, Retro Zoltan here. I'm looking to do something a little different today. I'd like to show you a device called the RetroPie Game Hat. What the hell am I talking about, you ask? Did I buy a special hat to play games with? Ha! Another Weasley. If you don't know anything about the Raspberry Pi, then you're probably very confused. And just to give a brief explanation, for those that don't know, a Raspberry Pi is a low-cost credit card sized computer. Engineers, hobbyists, and tinkerers love these things, and can make them do just about anything. A majority, like myself, are more interested in the gaming possibilities. Can you make your own console that plays old games? Can you make your own portable unit? Yes, you can. But is it easy? It depends. Which is why I wanted to talk to you about the Retro Pi Game Hat. In the Raspberry Pi world, a hat means a component that can easily attach without any soldering. It just connects and does what you want it to do for the most part. In this case, this is something you can buy to pretty much instantly make that Raspberry Pi you bought two years ago and did nothing with, and make it into a portable gaming system. They aren't too bad of a price depending on where you look. Resellers generally will sell them for around 50 and if you want to wait 21 months, you can order one from Wish for around $24. The game hat comes complete with the actual hat and the front and back panels as well as the parts to put it all together. There is an adapter to connect your RetroPie to the HDMI component of your hat, but that's the hardest part. If you're lucky enough to have a Raspberry Pi 4, there's a different looking adapter included. Since I have a Raspberry Pi 4 slated for something else, I'm just going to continue to use my Raspberry 3 for the rest of this video. The system also requires a battery, so you have to provide your own, but it's a rechargeable 18650 lithium, something that you're not going to find down the street. Found the cheapest option was to get a kit that came with a recharger, four batteries, and a flashlight. It's actually a pretty sweet flashlight if you're into that sort of thing. Anyway. Also, I originally thought I was going to have to keep removing the battery when it got low, but fortunately, all you have to do is plug in the micro USB and watch the red LEDs flash away until it's fully charged. A nice feature since I keep losing my screwdrivers. Once the battery is in and the HDMI adapter is connected, it's ready for the panels to be put on, and I didn't find it too hard. Once done, it looks pretty good, pretty basic, and homemade. The buttons have a very nice tactile click, and a lot of people like these. It has two massive speakers on the front and two triggers and a tiny on-off switch that feels backwards, a charging port and a headphone jack. The analog stick is fairly impressive, good movement, and also acts like a button, so no issues here. The firmware for this thing was a bit tricky, since the hat requires drivers. You can go and get the latest RetroPie image and install the drivers, or you can download the pre-made RetroPie game hat image and work your way from there. Even getting the SD card in the system felt like a shoddy game of operation. Getting games on this thing was a bit tricky also. The easiest method was to put them on a USB and then connecting them to your Pi while it's running. The system at that point just knows what to do. Since this is a review, I ended up going ahead with the pre-made image and tossing some games on there using the USB method. Most games work fine, and I had volume problems to start with, which you have to adjust in the menu system for each system, which is not my favorite sort of thing. The speakers sound amazing though, I have to say. I was not disappointed in how loud they could get, but also how crisp they were. The stereo sound sounds perfect. Arcade games ended up being a problem because I may have put them in the wrong directory, and Neo Geo games didn't work at all because I don't believe the files required for it to work are part of the default image, which is disappointing. I was really hoping Nintendo 64 would surprise me, but it did not. I'm guessing perhaps using the Pi 4 would have helped the emulation, but I want to stay focused on the game hat. What did surprise me was the PlayStation 1 emulation. It felt smooth and I was quite surprised with what I was seeing. Good job, Raspberry Pi 3. Here's a quick look at other games that worked really well on this thing.
Some other thing that was a problem was saving and loading games, to which most people really want. This is done normally by pressing the shoulder buttons on a controller and a combination of other buttons, but the game hat doesn't have shoulder buttons, just trigger buttons. So out of the box, using the pre-made image, you're not saving anything, which to me really hurts the stock of the setup. With some tweaking and calibrating of the buttons, it is possible, but you have to sacrifice two buttons that would otherwise be something else. I'll be honest with you, I really thought this was going to end up being a positive review, but after messing with it all and knowing the problems you're going to run into, my thoughts have changed. Unless if you're really into the Raspberry Pi scene, the tweaking around part, the connecting to the internet and downloading things part, you're not going to like this thing. It's fun, it's cool, it sounds great, but almost everything requires some tweaking, which just might not be your bag. If you'd rather be gaming than tweaking, then stay away from this. And that's all I have to say about the RetroPie game hat. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.